Okay, plan weekly meeting, 11th of May, 2022. And I have the first item. All right, so it may be common knowledge or not, I'm not sure, but project management and product planning will now organize us full stack teams. Uh, this means that Donald and I will uh, manage both specializations. So Donald will manage front end and back end engineers for project management, and I'll manage uh, both specializations for product planning. Um, I try to preempt some questions, but please add any questions you have. So uh, yeah, I realize there are pros and cons. However, one of the pros is that when you have vertical integration like this, um, planning should be more efficient um, and that the work that we plan should be more sustainable in the long term. Uh, we've already started handing over team members, so everybody affected already knows. Uh, we've also started with triage issues, planning tools, but team pages and bamboo will take a bit longer. And uh, as yet, there's currently no plan for full stack engineering roles, uh, just for full stack teams. Alex, you have the first question. Yeah, I'll mind the, uh, the formulation. Is it like, is currently the, the keyword here? Is like, are we moving towards that on the engineering side or not? Because that, at least on my side, that will involve quite a bit of a learning curve on the on the front end things of of engineering so yeah i was just like I, i'm curious if there is any discussion in that sense where um yeah it's more on on, on management stuff alex you didn't hear we're moving to node uh no no i'm just i'm just joking <laughs> <We're not. laughs> um okay so uh, i can i can take the first attempt at that uh no i don't think it's uh I, I don't think like i haven't heard of any plans in um in even the long-term future that we would move to full stack roles um or full stack engineering roles uh, i have my thoughts on full stack roles uh in that i think i mean both sides have become so complex that it's hard to, in my opinion, it's hard to be really good at, at both. Um, but we also, we do ha have some full stack engineering roles within the organization. And that hasn't really, I don't think expanded beyond like the initial teams that implemented those, maybe with the exception of single engineering groups. Um, but those, I think like going into the, uh, going into the creation of those types of teams, it was known that they wanted to get more. And it's not just full stack on the engineering side. Um, like it's also, they're looking for people with um, skill set skill sets outside or people that want to do stuff outside of engineering also. Uh, so no, I don't, I don't see it expanding um, towards the, the, uh, the roles that we have within teams. I think we'll always have specialties um, especially within the uh, dev sub department. Uh, and like kind of a related question, which you might have answered, but uh, I was just curious if like, even on the future hiring plans, is there like an emphasis on let's, let's try and hire more on the full stack engineers rather than very specific backend front end stuff? Or, or, or that's not a question either. You want to take that one, John? Uh, from my perspective, like I'd need to see a need in the team, like for a full stack role. Um, we are organized the way we are now, uh, and I think it works. And I think like the point of this was to get that vertical integration and not necessarily to like tightly couple front end and back end development. Um, I go wouldn't rule it out if there was like serious demand for it or something, but it's not something that I would consider currently. Yeah, I think we have a couple <laughs> who who do dive in both front end and, and back end. And then here I, I would refer to, I think, Julian and, and Heinrich and maybe someone else that, that I'm missing, but I think that, that those two are uh, someone who I've seen more frequently than than, than me, than myself, doing doing stuff on both front end and, and back end. So, yeah. 
do you see the work though becoming more specialized or less specialized over time right i would guess more specialized as it becomes harder as the code base becomes bigger yeah i would like given the the technological stack that we have i think it would go more specialized uh, i can see like in other instances where, where you're using node.js on the back end, right? There kind of feels more of a um, environment for, for full stack who can do, it, it, it feels kind of, it, it's not the same, but it feels closer to a, having a full stack engineer uh, in, in like where you use GS both on back end and, and front end. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I can only speak for myself. Uh, it'll be, I did some React in my past, but it, it, it's definitely a learning curve for, for me, especially when it comes to all the CSS and all that funky stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Awesome. Any other questions on that item? How, how do yeah, you I, how, how do you both feel as as manager tra managers transitioning to full stack managers? Because like on GitLab, we do have a part of this um, technical kind of responsibility. I would guess for the managers as well. It's like not purely a people's managers, right? Uh, it does require some level of uh, technical detail and, and technical understanding of stuff does that pose to you too now a challenge and how big that would be i think it's definitely i guess a question a challenge. for both of you yeah it's it's definitely going to be a challenge um on yeah on the other hand like it's like i think i i can get by understanding the technical direction of things i'm not sure i'm qualified to make a judgment on the quality of people's code on the front end necessarily but the main thing i'm concerned about as an em is uh quality in the sense of like are we keeping regressions under control um is the code secure are we estimating properly and meeting our estimates more than like the i think when it comes down to judging like the quality of the code that should be done at code review and anyway there are some metrics that can give you an indication of whether you're trending in the right direction or the wrong direction um they're not perfect but like mean time to merge would be one um yeah so i think there there are a couple of levers you can pull to sorry levers you can pull um to uh that are like consistent between front end and back end right um but yeah like it's definitely going to be a challenge i'm not going to pretend i did some backbone js professionally back probably over a decade ago i don't know i don't know if that qualifies me at all i'll leave that to the front end engineers to decide It does. I mean, Backbone's pretty foundational. It gives you enough experience in JavaScript to, um, to, to, it gives you enough to know, um, essentially. But uh, yeah, from my side, pretty much the same as, as John. Um, like, yeah, I, I know. Uh, and I mean, it's the same kind of as I've been uh, an EM on the, the front end side of things. Um, I don't, uh, I'm not the uh, the most talented front end engineer. I don't uh, I don't know nearly as much as the front end engineers on the team. Um, so while I've uh, uh, like I, I know enough to give um, to to be a rubber duck or to give some advice, and I'll know enough on the back end side because I. Um, so on the, on the back end side, I have uh, experience with, or on the Ruby side, on with Sinatra back in 
also like a decade or more ago. Um, but yeah, it's essentially the same thing or the plan for me at least is essentially the same thing that I've been doing on the front end where a lot of it is, is partnering with, or a lot of it is gonna be partnering with you all. Um, and when you do have questions on, uh, on backend implementation, just knowing, uh, knowing who to, to go to um, for, for the answers that you all need. So I'm, I'm excited about the change um, primarily because it allows uh, me um, to kind of focus on a, a single group and then it allows an external uh, folks um, if they need any, if they have any technical questions um, for like project management or even product planning, um, they have kind of one EM to go to. They have one um, one kind of source, so I think it'll uh, it'll prevent um, a bit of the confusion that we had before, where people maybe weren't sure whether to go to myself or Jake or myself or John. So I have a question. So uh, I dropped out for uh, the first couple of minutes here after I joined. Uh, so maybe you've explained it and you know, if, if so, I can just go and watch the recording. But uh, so just to make sure I understand the change for non-engineers, so like for myself, for example, or Alexis or Nick, uh, what is changing, what is gonna be new is that you, Donald, are gonna suddenly be managing also backend engineers. And like you said, be responsible for one group uh and the same but reverse for john uh does it mean uh that that, that all the engineers are going to be aiming at becoming full stack or you know am i getting it correctly or no uh yeah and no we're still going to have uh back end and front end uh engineers it's just going to be, so a team is gonna involve both front end and back end engineers. Um, so the team in that sense will be full stack, but the engineers on the team as of now. Um, and, and for a, a while at least, like we have no plans of bringing in uh, as of now, full stack engineers. Okay, thanks. Cool, any further questions? How do you all feel? How do the engineers uh, feel? You've all kind of uh, known or been told individually um, for a, a bit now. How are you all feeling? I think it sounds good to me in the perspective that like we one doesn't have to go to two managers now to coordinate stuff uh, for a given feature set or for a given like group question. So I think there is some efficiency to be had there uh, from at least that perspective. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to be, we try it out. I don't think there should be any issues to be totally honest. I, I think you'll both look great. Um, and yeah. I know that there are already other teams that are doing that, right? Like I think, in manage or somewhere. Um, and now that I think that like, do we have any kind of feedback from those teams in terms of these are the things that we found like challenging and we like so, some sort of a retrospective in that sense from people like moving from front end to back end, like to full stack or, or the other way around, right? Um, so I guess that would be something to, to be looked at and, and 
uh, taken as some some kind of a experience feedback. I think Dennis yeah. uh, from Manage offered some advice for us, right, on a team call there last week. Yeah, Manage is the, the team that most recently um, switched from having separate teams to the full stack teams. And Dennis, uh, who was one of the EMs uh, that went through that transition, uh, yeah, offered to, to help us. So, uh, we should definitely schedule uh, a meeting with with them um, just to, like Alex said, get some have a have a retro um, on how they went, how they handled the transition. Uh, well, like I'm, I'm wondering, this transition was meant as uh, trying to make it more efficient, or or was it a derivative of, of like a lack of engine of engineering managers so like like there is a deficit of in engineering managers so it, it kind of feels both uh, like making it more efficient right for for one person like to have this single full stack teams but also like you kind of so so in our case you'd think you'd need like four managers right like if we take the planning and the project management groups and then you also divide it by front end and back end then you kind of want to have four managers and, and and in this instance you get sort of two managers uh so I, i'm just like curious was it driven by by the by the um I think there is a problem with the hiring, not only, not like not on GitLab, but in general in, in software, what I've heard of in, in chats being discussed. So I'm wondering if that's one way to kind of address this problem with hiring or, or, or it's not that. Yeah, I don't think it's because of that. Um like i'll split the question there's definitely um something going on in hiring not with GitLab, but in the market generally like um i have to say like having just hired for the team i didn't find it as difficult as i thought i was gonna find it just from what i know about the market that's not why we did this though um i think in, in the end we'll still need in order to make the plans in the long term we'll still need roughly the same number of managers and we still have to have the same uh, maximum report to manager ratio, which is currently maxed out for Donald and I anyway, but that's okay temporarily. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say it's because of that. We just, with Jake having left when he did, we had to look at our plans for the future and look at the team and kind of say like, well, you know, instead of like giving people, you know, a new manager and then suddenly needing to switch later in the year and having that like negative experience of people moving manager you know multiple times we'll just try and get ahead of it and consider what you know what's going to set us up best for for the rest of the year and this was an interesting idea that yeah grew legs and we decided to try it out so are we looking and i think donald mentioned it on the last one on one but just like as a wider, I think, point, like we, we, we are looking to hire yet another manager in our stage, I guess, right? And that like the plan is to hire to hire one manager, like not not more than one or? So yeah, we still have uh, Jake's backfill. Um, we're still gonna hire for that role. Um, there's still conversations on beyond that, what we're going to do beyond that, uh, if we're going to bring on, uh, try to bring on another EM. I don't think we have the, um, uh, it's called the headcount allotment for, uh, for a fourth EM as of now, um, but there has been a lot of uh, conversations with, with Tim and, and leadership on um, adding an additional, but for now, we're just looking for Jake's backfill and then once we hire that role, we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to, um, where they're going to kind of sit. Uh, 
I was just that's at least my, it. sorry, Gabe. Um, that that was my understanding, John. Is that what yours is too? That um, we hired a Jake's backfill now, and then we try to add a, another um, EM uh, in the I don't know if this year, but sometime in the short term future. Yeah, I think so. I think we might even have the greenhouse ID, although don't quote me on it for Jake's re replacement. But we don't have an open role for it yet anyway, as far as I can see. But like, yeah, that's as far as I understand it, the plan. I was just going to add, I think that um, this will actually make collaboration a little bit more efficient. Just so like from a product person, I had had to coordinate with two different EMs across like everything. And so just be able to work with one EM to do some of the planning and project management stuff. I think uh, I'm excited to try that out. So, Yeah, and also like um, in terms of planning full stack work, right? Like if we're planning a full new feature, I think it'll be more efficient in that, you know, it doesn't have to go through like, <laughs> like uh, back end engineer speaks to me and then I speak to Donald and then Donald speaks to one of his reports and so on back and forth until, you know, we figure out how to plan a piece of work so that everything aligns properly and the back end is done in time for the front end and so on. So it's just gonna be more efficient that way. You know, we have a full view over everything and we can answer questions when asked. No one has anything else on that? We can move on to Kashal's demo. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have already linked uh, to the conversations uh, that we have here. One is basically, so what we are planning to do this release is we are updating the styles for the state badges across all issuables. That includes uh, issues, merge requests, epics, and test cases. <laughs> And uh, we are basically adding an icon representing the issuable type within the badge itself, uh, along with the style of the badge uh, to use GitLab UI instead of uh, uh, custom styles. Uh, now the, there is this conversation around whether to put tooltips or not. If we want to put tooltips, then what would be the ideal uh, text that we put there for each state types? So I've already linked uh, DMR in which the changes are there. Uh, it has a lot of screenshots as well of how it looks right now and uh, whether we want to go ahead with the tooltips or not. I would suggest that since the discussion is still open, I wanted to have a, a larger visibility of the team to basically chime in and uh, give their opinions on whether we want to have tooltips with the badges or not. And uh, in case we do decide to put in the tooltips, we can do it as a follow-up MR. So Alexis, you want to? Uh, yeah, I was kind of just like, they look good. Uh, good job. I think, yeah, we could totally add those as like a next iteration. Um, maybe we could look a little bit, kind of like audit what states we have available, like archived, make sure um, those make sense. Maybe at some point we want to revisit requirements and think about how we might um, you know, look at that as well. And then there's some things like the um, test case icon and a few other things that like we may have to revisit those as well because I don't think we have states for all of our like quote unquote work items available right now. So I don't, you know, we don't have like a archived test case icon, for example. So yeah. that's something we want to look into as well. But this yeah. looks awesome. Yeah, so for test cases, I reuse the existing test case icon for both uh, open state and archived state. So yeah, we'll, we'll eventually have to update uh, the icon there. But yeah, besides if, if we don't want to include tooltips at least in this MR, so given that this MR is already large and I already got the review started because we only have two days for this MR to be merged. 
So I didn't want to wait further on having a decision regarding tooltips, like which particular text we want, because we had a lot of opinions, both from create uh, team as well as our team. So I wanted to basically give in more time on what tooltip we want to go with. Uh, and uh, for now, we can go with just the badge UI updates. Uh, and in, in 15.1, once we have the decision in whether we want to keep tooltips or not, we can. <laughs> I don't know if the, the dog liked that decision. But I don't know. Um, yeah, that sounds good. I think that's fine. And like I said, we can kind of think a little bit um, higher level too, but I think this is a really nice iteration towards more guidance with those state changes and the icons. So it's awesome. Uh, Gabe, can't read. So Gabe or John, whoever wants to talk. Well, I'll just ver verbalize. I think it'd be really cool because eventually we're going to have sort of different statuses within each state. Um, and it'd be really nice just to be able to click on that to change the status eventually. So like there's no interface right now for marking something as a duplicate or other like the other closed statuses, if that makes sense. There's only just one open state, but there's sort of actually sort of different statuses for closed already. Uh, in terms of moved, uh, duplicate, and that sort of thing. And I don't know if all of them belong there, but switching between like open and closed would be really nice from that area too. I've seen a lot of products that do that. Um, and then once we have more statuses, it'd be cool if that was also like an interactive thing, just an idea. No, I like that. Like, um, I've been thinking that as well, Gabe, and especially it's like you said, if we get more statuses or for states, like you could just change it from to do, done, up there, that kind of thing would be interesting. I think that's what users expect. And one thing I've seen in a lot of research studies, users want to go or participants want to go um, to the header for things like confidentiality as well. So when I say like, hey, change this issue to confidential, they always go to the header. So I'm thinking like those kind of status things, that could be interesting to have up there as a control as well. Yeah, Nick and I were, or Nick was not me, but mainly Nick was exploring doing uh, like a new action bar on the top for the new work item UI to put some of those controls up there. So that'd be a cool thing for y'all to slap on too. Heck yeah. Promoted to Epic is another one, another interesting state for closed issue, which won't be around forever, I guess, because we'll get rid of it when we have work items, because they'll literally just be promoted to Epic and it'll be the same work item. But it is in the meantime, like something that's like a little painful. Uh, that's not my item though. The, the, my item was just a brain dump. Uh, yeah, one of the things that really like I spend way too much time doing is scrolling to the bottom of MRs to find out when they were merged. Um, so it'd be really cool if the, if the tooltip had the date at which the MR was merged. So I didn't have to do that. Just a thought. That's really good feedback. That should be in the header maybe, right? I saw an open issue somewhere where once something is closed, replace the created by in the header with the closed date and the person who closed it. Because once it's closed, you don't really need to know who created it. Um, that could be also an interesting solution. Um, I've always found it kind of strange <laughs> while we're airing our grievances about the design uh, that the created by is so prominent. Like it takes up a big part of the real estate and that information is not always uber relevant, especially here at GitLab where some issues that we're working on are like two years old, right? Um, like who wrote it initially is less relevant. It's more about like who's assigned to it now, who's been the latest person that's made an update. Um, so that's also something to consider. Yeah, I think Annabelle's, and I'm helping her with some of this, but with the Beautify uh, effort growing on this milestone, she's kind of just like tinkering on a few things, especially with MRs. And then we're also looking into some MR redesign stuff. So awesome feedback. And thanks for adding notes, Melissa. <laughs> I was trying.
Any other tooltip stuff for us to move on to B? B it is, Mari. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hey, everyone. So I just figured this would be a good time to maybe discuss this. I already talked to you, Donald, about it. Uh, but I still feel like uh, we don't have a clear plan on how to do this. I mean, I know we have been doing differently before. Uh, and I think the reason why we're discussing this so much is because we want to do it better this time, I guess. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, Donald proposed an MR, um, which has uh, one of the ideas of how we would be able to do this. So I wanted to get feedback from more people on, on what do you all think. We all also discussed a little bit with Gabe at some point, but some of the, the ideas we have are like, um, um, should we, well, the, the proposed uh, idea from Donald's MR is what if we create a separate um, feature flag for things, we, we're talking about work, the work items feature flag, and so the idea is what if we create a new feature flag for things that are more stable and kind of more ready to be rolled out to a general audience um, into the new flag so we can at some point enable that one by default, I guess, or maybe not even that, but simply add more people, I mean, enable it for more groups um, and then make the feature more generally available at some point, I guess, while still leaving the some code, especially front end code on the original feature flag, um, which will live longer, I guess. But yeah, as we were discussing in the issue I linked, um, that might not be a, uh, a good idea, especially because then we would have dependency between the front end and the back end. I mean, if we are planning to release some things into the, into the new feature flag, especially back end stuff, then it would mean that for the feature to work, we would need to enable both feature flags uh, at the same time. And if, for example, we enable only the front end one, then it would break uh, because the backend won't send the right responses because it's also behind the feature flag. So yeah, that's so not sure if um, anyone else has some ideas on how we should roll this out this time. I mentioned once that perhaps one thing we could do is like uh, kind of stage out uh, the, the work we're doing, for example, in work items. Let's say, uh, for example, we have reached uh, at this point, uh, we have gathered, I don't know, a set of features that are stable enough to be released. So maybe new things like in this case, uh, the widget implementation of fields uh, might start development uh, under a new feature flag, something like that. So features are like, um, um, I don't know, grouped under the, the same thing. And then maybe work items, which is the current feature flag at some point can be made uh, defaulted to on and at some point removed while we still have uh, the new stuff under another feature flag. I mean, that's one idea I had, but I'm not sure. That's what I wanted to discuss here if anyone else has ideas. So it's more like dependent, like interdependent feature flags. Is that? I mean, yeah, I think that's what would happen with the proposed approach. And yeah, I mean, so I think we should avoid that. I mean, dependent feature flags, but still not sure how we would accomplish that if we want to roll stuff in pieces, roll out stuff yeah. in pieces. I, I guess. And I, I, I didn't dive too into too much detail from the like backend or technical perspective, but like I guess the idea is to clearly define the vertical slices that we want and feature flag that as well mm -hmm. as we can. And then if we want a different 
if we want a new vertical slice, even if that's an addition to the original one, then still use a different teacher flag for that addition, right? So that's that's a separate piece of work. And then in code, we can do if this feature flag and this feature flag, that's that's where you can kind of roll out the newer thing. Uh, uh, does that does that make sense? Because like, but obviously it all starts at the like define, defining the boundaries. Um, what does this feature flag actually uh, mean, right? Mm -hmm. what, what does this what belongs to which one? Until like showing to the user everything like from what what is meant by a vertical slice, like the front mm -hmm. end, the back end, everything does define there, like the the APIs that needs to be there. So everything is covered by one feature flag. And then if we need to extend that. Uh, with any kind of new functionality or adding new functionality that should go under a different teacher flag so that that we do not prevent the initial teacher flag being um, rolled out just because mm -hmm. the new feature flag is not like the new functionality is not yet ready or it is uh, adding some some stuff to that right that and another sense? alternative yeah it makes sense uh one thing uh, and i think we did, did discuss this approach and um, yeah, it, uh, I think the only con was the same as I already mentioned that we would still have dependent feature flags, right? I mean, for some features, we would have to have both enabled for them to work. So that's uh, a con. But one thing we could do there is instead of doing this feature flag and this feature flag, simply write the new feature in a way that we use or instead, you know, like if this new feature uh, uses the new feature flag, check for this feature flag. But if it also requires, I don't know, a mutation that was previously behind the, the older feature flag, we enable that mutation for the older feature flag or the new feature flag if enabled. So if either of those is enabled, the mutation is available. Uh, so by using or, uh, I mean, we would have to, to write the code with that logic in place, um, but then we wouldn't be dependent, uh, I mean, one feature flag wouldn't be dependent on the other. And also just uh, to add it to, I'm sorry, go ahead, if you have something else to add here. Uh, no, no, go ahead, and then, then I'll add mine. No, I, I was just going question. to add the, sorry, uh, go ahead. Quick. I just want to understand the intent of uh, the multiple feature flags, right? Since um, new to the approach, so in layman terms, <laughs> I'm trying to understand what you're trying to do. Basically, there's ongoing development for work items, which we intend to keep behind a feature flag. And then some of it will become beta ready, but not GA ready. And we want to keep that behind a feature flag, but then also have another one for sort of like in development things within a milestone. Am I understanding that correctly? Yep, I think that's the main reason, right? Um, yeah. Because we want to be able to make some things available at some point, but we continue to drag stuff uh, because we continue to develop new stuff on the same feature. Mm -hmm. So we're not able to to release mm -hmm. the, 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 the more stable and older things. But that's what I was going to add before. I mean, what we have been doing so far is... I don't know we, what we did with iteration cadences, right? We had a single feature flag and simply waited for for mm -hmm. the whole thing to be more mature to enable it. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we have been doing so far, I guess. So that's another alternative. I guess what Melissa just said is the, the main reason why we're considering doing something new. Um, that's, yeah, that's the thing, I mean, if we should do something like that, and if not, because the alternative is to continue to have one, a single feature flag. And then, I mean, Donald, I think the main problem was what the, the dependency we have with the front end, right? I mean, because, well, even with multiple or a single feature flag, the front end will continue to have to wait for an entire milestone in order to use something new from the back end. So, yeah, I so didn't, I, didn't really um, I, yeah, I mean, I think the original problem we were trying to solve was like, if you think about the work items feature flag uh, or work items, the, the feature, um, what does that entail? Like work items is going to be uh, tasks and feature and 
moving epics, like you can consider everything a work item. So does that mean we, like, I think the original intent was to use the work items feature flag for, for a very long time for everything that you can consider a work item. Um, but then if we do that, the problem we were trying to solve was how do we, how do we move uh, smaller features within work items to, um, uh, to kind of, uh, to be allowed to be tested by more users and then to get into production. Um, so I think this approach that Melissa um, uh, wrote there is, is one of the um, proposals to do this. Uh, another is, I think, what um, Mario and Alexandra are talking about um, in that just creating a new feature flag for all of these features. So right now, um, the thing we're trying to do is get, uh, get tasks um, to um, get tasks turned on and then defaulted to on. Um, so we could create another feature flag for, uh, for tasks, move everything that we have right now into tasks and then turn on that feature flag for like GitLab org or for all of gitlab.com. Um, or we could right now, because I think the only thing that is in work items, uh, the work items feature flag right now is everything task related. Like, I don't think we've added any description based stuff. Um, so we could technically just kind of take that feature flag for tasks um, and then create a new feature flag for upcoming work item types or upcoming features. Uh, so we can create another work item description feature flag and throw all the description stuff in there and the other widgets. Um, just if we do that, like Mario stated, um, we, have to, we have to be really good about vertically slicing because we don't want to get into a place where maybe having one dependency on a feature flag isn't too bad. But if we start building on top of that and have like, if there's ever any delays in the, um, in the, uh, in the root um, feature flag that cause us to, or, and we're working on other features, it, it'll just build up. So we want to make sure not to do that. Right. That, that would make sense to me. And I was thinking that from the develop, development side, it might work. I mean, well, it will be kind of weird because people working on the new feature flag would probably have the old feature flag on locally, but it would be great if we can turn it off just to make sure, I don't know, the front end is going to be using a mutation that was behind the original feature flag. So um, this, should also be available on the new feature flag. So for them making a request to the backend um, with only the new feature flag enabled uh, should fail. So it should be at that moment that they raise that we should add another check for the mutation on the backend, something like that. I, I, I mean, talking about the or thing, like is tasks uh, work, work item task uh, feature flag enabled or is widgets or items feature flag enabled. So enable this mutation for either of those cases. Um, so yeah, that's that's one idea. Not sure how we should proceed. So that's why I'm asking here. I see Alexandru thinking really hard. So maybe he has an answer. <laughs> No, I don't. Yeah. No, that's fine. Um, I was just pretending to think really fast. <laughs> uh, something that I was uh, thinking about is just the concept of moving away from really long lived feature flags. Um, they get hard to manage, right? And then we have this really long package of value at the end, right? Versus more incremental changes. Um, and then easier feedback. Um, so I think I now realize, Alexandru, you were saying sort of like what I'm saying, but in different ways, right? Of just like being more intentional about how we break up the phases of work so that we don't need to have these long lived feature flags. Maybe it's two releases, right? 
ambitiously like wanting it to be like in a single milestone we have something that is releasable right on its own uh and moving more toward thinking about that uh now that we're past this first phase of work items um so that we don't end up in a situation where we have multiple feature flags to like enable things right and it's difficult for to manage for us and it's difficult for users then to discover and get the value out of the work that we've been doing. Yeah, that, that's the same thing I was trying to say with the vertical slices, like be more intentional on the MVCs that we can like, let's, let's make it as minimal as possible under this specific mm -hmm. feature flag, move it on, default it to the enabled and move on to the next thing or feature flag the next thing so that it doesn't interact with the original um, work, so to say. Um, obviously, it's it's harder to do, but um, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Um, and we as PM will need your help to tell us like what is small enough to be in like a milestone, right, of an MVC, so that we don't have to have these feature flags for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, it should it would have to be small enough for the backend to be developed at the beginning of the milestone and the front end to use it on the same milestone. Yeah, it, it sounds like very, it's more of like small. two milestones, right? Right, Mario. If we need Usually, to do some, some vertical least, slice yeah. that involves front end as well, it sounds like the minimal the MVC would still be two milestones just because the way we do deployments. Yeah. Um, where you need you to have, have to. the backend fully deployed first before you kind of can use this backend on the front end stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. It was a bit very small and at, at the right time for for us backend and front end to be able to deliver on the same milestone. The actually on that, so the CRM feature that's going to be released in this milestone, we ran into exactly this problem. Um, and the decision was, well, the consensus was that we could release the feature because it's a brand new feature and we would simply accept that during the deployment, some customers might experience, uh, unexpected behavior as long as we could quantify the unexpected behavior. Right. So in a multi version compatibility issue, if it was going to create, um, a data integrity problem, then we couldn't proceed, right? An example of that would be uh, the rollout of, um, I forget specifically, but it was something that generated tokens, but the reader of the tokens was changed. And so the tokens that were generated were invalid and we ended up with invalid data in the database indefinitely and that caused problems. Um, however, like it really depends on the feature is what I'm getting. Uh, in terms of feedback, it depends. If it's a brand new feature, then it's possible we can roll it out in one release and simply accept it. The other way is defensive programming, either on the front end or the back end. Design the front end to deal with the fact that the back end might fail or the fields you're looking for in GraphQL is not there. And there may be work on the back end to do there as well, like because I think GraphQL just silently fails if you ask for a field that isn't there. So maybe there's something we need to do there as well. And the third thing is that it's a misconception that feature flags actually help this problem anyway. They don't. You have to still roll out over a large deployment. A feature flag can take minutes to roll out. And so you're still going to have some nodes with the new front end code, some of the old back end code, and so on. And the node that serves your front end code doesn't know what node is going to serve the requests that it issues, whether it's got the new code or the old code. So. I think there are still some mis misconceptions about how feature flags can help us with multi-version compatibility issues. It would take each um, feature on its own merit. And if we can get work items features down to tiny vertical slivers, then it may be possible to release them in one milestone. Yeah, definitely that. I mean, it definitely doesn't help, help with multi-version <laughs> deployments. But hopefully that's something that will be fixed. Uh, no, I was going to say soon, but it's been worked on. I mean, there are several issues where this is being discussed. Uh, I think there are several approaches already in the table to perhaps be implemented in the future. So this might not be a problem 
sometime soon, hopefully. That would be great. And I also wanted to ask you both, I mean, from the EM side of things, would it be easy or do you see any problems uh, with identifying the vertical slices for each feature flag or would it be simple to say like this issue should definitely use the, the new feature flag and this one should use this one or do you see any problems there from the management side if we decide to do that do this uh, i think if we get a lot of the um uh, the core work item functionality in now uh, it's going to make it a little easier for future um, uh, for future features to um, to be smaller and vertically sliced. Uh, I think right now, with having a lot of stuff under the work items feature flag, uh, there's going to be there's going to be dependencies that are in that feature flag. Um, so, so to answer your question, no, I don't think it'll I don't think it'll be too big of a problem as long as we get the core functionality in there. Um, it may all, so what do you think with uh, the description work? Um, so maybe not so much with the description work, but in future widgets where um, uh, we're using the architecture we've been talking about in Jan's uh, POC, um, is there a lot of stuff we need to get in uh, from there in order to implement uh, new widgets, maybe that don't have an existing column within the uh, issues table? Does that question make sense? I think so. I, I just uh, got lost a little bit in the end. Um, so yeah, I think what you said first was fine. I mean, let's we should start thinking about that. I mean, uh, should the new widget implementation be already under a separate feature flag? And also, should the front end already start using the new feature flag for, for things that are already under development? For example, if we wanted to uh, release something on the next iteration, perhaps, uh, for example, the delete task uh, mutation is, um, is something that the front end should start using under a new, new feature flag because it was released recently in 15.0, um, something like that, but not sure if that's what you were saying. And also we're running out of time. Yeah, so just real quick, <laughs> uh, I don't know if we want to get that granular. Um, <laughs> like I, ideally we just, everything that is in work items right now, so everything task related is a single feature flag. Um, everything description related is another feature flag. And right now, since those are the two main things that we're working on in 15.0, those are the only two feature flags we use right now. And then we can worry about multi-version compatibility with um, some of the queries and mutations um, for tasks totally. later. Okay, that's fine. Is so everyone okay really should... with that? Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start treating, we're going to start treating work items as really that's work task. item tasks. Um, but I'm not going to change the name of that. We'll just work on, like, are we at a point right now where I can turn on uh, the work items feature flag for a larger group other than just plain stage? Can I turn that on for GitLab org? Uh, we're waiting for descriptions to be finalized. Mm -hmm. For GitLab org? Oh, I don't know. You can ask Gabe. Okay. All right, I will do that. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, Marchins is read only. So we can call it three minutes early or two minutes late. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Sure. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Good talking Thank to you all.
Bye. See you.